Now we will talk about the next question and this is the question number 8 and the question is write a short paragraph on the harms caused by the microorganisms. So, this is answer number 8. So, the major uh, harmful side or effect is what? Microorganisms causes many diseases, microorganisms causes various diseases. Now, in the same chapter we have discussed the chart of the diseases along with the responsible microorganisms like bacteria, bacteria is responsible for causing various diseases like tetanus, cholera, dysentery, hepatitis, diphtheria and uh, in the same way if we talk about the viruses, viruses are responsible for causing various diseases like simple and very common the cold or even if we talk about the dangerous one AIDS or polio chicken pox, swine flu and this way many diseases are there. When we talk about the uh, plants and animals, the microorganisms are also responsible for causing various kinds of diseases and due to this like take the example maybe the tuberculosis or anthrax caused by the bacteria. Uh, then ex, uh, so, uh, sort of a, uh, the foot or the mouth infection, if you talk about in humans the eczema, the ringworms and many skin diseases are also there. So, this chart is already being given in the uh, one of the lecture uh, while teaching this uh, chapter only. So, uh, I do not think so that we need to write the chart over here again, but we, we can write that microorganisms causes various diseases. So, you can write over here various diseases caused by the bacteria in all three plants, animals and humans. Then you can take viruses what uh, uh, which diseases are they causing then you can write about the uh, fungi also and this way you can write make this answer a very uh, elaborate and accurate one. And at the same time the uh, details you know can be explained in 1, 1, 2, 2 lines. So, it depends upon the marks and the also that how this question is asked that maybe write 10 lines or 20 lines or 5 lines or write the harmful effect of bacteria. So, all this has been discussed. So, I will just write over here the major 3 things which I am discussing from the beginning that microorganisms causes various diseases, diseases where like in humans ok in I did write in humans animals and also in plants and also in plants. So, here by writing the sentence and then writing all the names of the diseases this the uh, this point can be covered. Now, second point over here you can write as this one is A that microorganisms are responsible for spoiling our food microorganisms are responsible are responsible for spoiling of or spoilage of or spoiling whatever you want to write spoiling food. So, take example of the bread mould if the bread is kept along with the chutney or gem that means the moisture is there and if it is not consumed bit, bit, you know within the period then this fungi will attack and definitely will find some cottony white structure on that and which cannot be consumed. So, uh, we are well aware of that that microorganisms are responsible for spoiling of food spoiling of food. Now, food poisoning food poisoning is also caused by the uh, microorganism food poisoning. So, again take the example of the bacteria and especially in the packed or tinned food. If we talk about tinned food we have discussed this that how even sometimes the gas is formed in the tinned food 
and you know when it when you open it the gas gushes out with a great, great pressure and such kind of food is not at all uh, suitable for um, eating should be thrown away directly and uh, many a times uh, you know what we do is this is also discussed that we open the tin food and we do not consume that food in the particular time you know one or two or three days and if it is skipped so what happens again the growth of the microorganism increased and it can be very disastrous for us so when it comes about the spoiling of food we need to take the precautions that moisture and the time boiling of food um, is very very uh, important curdling of milk all these are examples of what harmful effect of uh, microorganisms but when we talk about poisoning or uh, so what is happening the microorganism produce certain toxic material microorganisms produce this certain toxic material thus thus makes the food unfit for consumption so this is the thing that the whatever details will be doing all these details will be coming under this three categories only that means uh, either you will be talking whenever you are talking about the harmful effect of microorganisms either you will be talking about the uh, disease um, caused by the microorganisms maybe bacteria virus uh, fungi maybe in plants from the algae or you will be talking about the spoiling of food or the third one we may be talking about the food poisoning that means the microorganisms produces certain toxic substances which is very very dangerous for us and it call it gives us food poisoning which should be literally avoided so these are the harmful effects of the microorganism now we will be discussing the last answer of uh, ncert which is now answer number 9th and the question is now uh, what are antibiotics so uh, what are antibiotics uh, again the second part of the question is also there that what precautions must be taken while taking antibiotics so first of all if we are asked or if the question is what are antibiotics so antibiotics are the chemical substances which are produced by the microorganism and which has the capability to kill other microorganism so first of all they have asked what uh, are antibiotics so first of all we need to write the definition of antibiotics so antibiotics are certain chemical structures formed by chemical substance also you can write okay chemical substance formed by microorganisms which has the capacity which has the capacity to kill the pathogens or the other microorganisms now you can write over here the examples of few antibiotics now i don't think so that i need to give you the examples of antibiotics so here you will you can write the examples of antibiotics and now the second part the precautions required the precautions which are required to take uh, before or you know when before taking the antibiotics there are certain precautions which we need to take 
so what are the precautions which we need to take is first of all the doctor the doctor should be well qualified the doctor should be good the doctor should uh, be the one who has knowledge about his subject you know subject i'm saying that whatever uh, field he is in he is uh, well versed in that field so doctor should be because many times you know this is also this happens that uh, we do not go to doctor we become as you know we ourselves start treating us as the doctor but we are not the good doctors we are we do not know much about that just you know by uh, seeing the symptoms or some like maybe anything maybe because feeling lazy to go uh, and sit uh, in the queue of the doctor uh, for uh, waiting for it because always we have to wait for the doctors we have to be in queue so to avoid that or sometimes you know but just understanding the symptoms as you know the common one or very simple or sometimes taking the things very easily whatever but uh, first of all we try to avoid doctors so it but it should not be done because we do not have knowledge about all these we can just take the medicines just if we uh, Uh, maybe many a times you may uh, you know have uh, certain cold or something you may take certain syrups but every time the, this thing cannot be done so need to go to a proper doctor so doctor should be well qualified at the same time when we go to the doctor we need to check that the doctor is uh, good so he is well qualified and good at his work and good at his work so one should not try to become doctor that means should not try to uh, you know to give medicines to uh, ourselves like we should not uh, treat ourselves and second thing uh, if you are going to doctor see that the doctor is good he is good at his work is well qualified now second medicines should be taken as suggested by the doctor as suggested by the doctor now what is the meaning of this that very often we go to the doctor we take the uh, prescription we you uh, know and we take the medicines also but we do not maintain that interval you know medicines has to be taken under fixed intervals if it is written thrice or twice it has to be taken accordingly so underdose and overdose both are of no use and on the contrary it will be very very mm, sometime it can be very very dangerous for us because if the doses are not taken in proper way high dose can uh, give you another kind of problems maybe uh, some kind of allergy maybe side effects can be more and the underdose will not be able to help you out won't be able you won't be able to you know to get rid of whatever medi- whatever uh, um, disease uh, or problem you are going through so medicines has to be taken as suggested by the doctor and in the proper dose that means if the if the if the tablet has been asked to uh, no if you are been asked to take one complete tablet so half tablet won't work this this is the meaning of dose so if you have asked to take the tablet thrice that means it has to be taken thrice so this is the second point now third is over like you no know, always uh, for very little thing also if uh, uh, we uh, you know start taking medicines that is also not uh, good sometimes we need to uh, allow our body to heal naturally in i am talking in very very normal things suppose you have an headache so it's not required that you just have an headache and you immediately uh, go to a doctor maybe you have not taken the meals properly maybe you have no, you you have not slept properly you you may be uh, needing little rest so 
every time taking medicine that means too much of medicines should be avoided too much of medicines too much of medicines should be avoided so these all are the precautions which we need to follow before we take the medicines uh, first of all we need to go to a proper doctor and after going to proper doctor we need to follow the instructions properly and for every little thing you know some people have this habit also uh, even in slightest you know uh, smallest problem also they just run to the doctor and the other part is also there that some people are there who do not even want to go to doctor even if they are suffering from uh, you know serious diseases so this has to be taken care of uh medication medicine should be taken in the proper doses uh, doses in the proper amount proper at the right time uh too much of medicines should be avoided that means uh, the time also is very very important uh, which uh, if you do not take the medicines in the right time at the right at the right time and the dose is not correct this medicines won't be very very helpful for you so all these precautions has to be taken care of and uh, this was the last question of the ncert and with this i'll close this and definitely now we will be discussing certain extra questions from uh, you know which can help you to understand the chapter better thank you hello students now we will be discussing about the certain extra questions so we have already discussed the questions which were given in ncert now uh, first question to begin with is define so first question is define now in define first of all the first is ammonification the first one is ammonification first is ammonification now we have discussed this in the uh, nitrogen fixation part also in nitrogen cycle also we have discussed what is the meaning of ammonification so how can we define the uh, this term ammonification the process of conversion of the or the breakdown of proteins uh, present in the animals and plants body into ammonia so how can we define this in short how can we say this the process the process of conversion of the proteins into the ammonia ammonification that means what the formation of ammonia very simple so the process of the process of breakdown of proteins from the i have not drawn a line over here from the body of dead plants and animals and the formation of and the formation of ammonia is ammonification is ammonification so 
I am talking about ammonification. What is the meaning of ammonification? The formation of ammonia from the proteins which are present in the organisms. So, the process of breakdown of proteins from the body of dead plants and animals and the formation of ammonia is called as ammonification. Now, we will move to the second one. The second is Uh, the second is uh, nitrification. Now, we have done this also. What is the, how can we define nitrification? First of all, I will write the term nitrification. Nitrification. Now, what is ammonification? The formation of ammonia from the proteins is ammonification. And what is nitrification? from the process of the process of formation of nitrates from ammonia is nitrification. Now, we have discussed this that how nitrification uh, is completed. First of all, ammonia will be complete uh, converted into nitrites and the nitrites will be converted into nitrates and here every time a different group of bacteria will be working. Now, what is denitrification? Just opposite to that, that means the conversion of nitrates, that means when the nitrates will be converted. Uh, into the nitrogen, uh, atmospheric nitrogen, then I, I should not say just opposite to this. That means the uh, here the nitrates are formed, I mean to say this, the here nitrates are formed, but denitrification means what? The breakdown of nitrates, nitrification, formation of nitrates, denitrification, the breakdown of nitrates into what? Atmospheric nitrogen. So, this is the second definition. Now, we will come to the third one. Yeah, that is also given. So, now we will talk about the third definition and third definition is for denitrification. These terms are, it is very very important to understand these terms. Once we understand these terms then it is very easy to write the nitrogen cycle or to write long answer, short answer on nitrogen fixation or nitrogen cycle or any kind of answer related to this. Now, Ammonification, formation of ammonia from the protein. Nitrification, ammonia get converted into nitrites and nitrites get converted into nitrates. This is nitrification. Now, denitrification, the breakdown of nitrates into the atmospheric nitrogen. The process of, now white chalk I need to take. The process of converting nitrates into the atmospheric nitrogen, the atmospheric nitrogen is denitrification. I am not writing is denitrification. So, ammonification is formation of ammonia from the proteins, nitrification is the formation of nitrates from the ammonia, ammonia will get converted into nitrites, nitrites will get converted into nitrates. Now, the next one is denitrification and denitrification is what? The process of conversion of nitrates to the uh, atmospheric nitrogen. Come to the fourth one now. Fourth is nitrogen cycle. Now, just now we have studied what is the meaning of nitrogen cycle. Whenever the word cycle comes, that means it is about the rotation, circulation. So, the process of circulation of nitrogen through the living and the non living things is known as nitrogen cycle. So, the process of
circulation the process of circulation of nitrogen through or you can write nitrogen and its compound nitrogen and its compounds through living and non living things is known as nitrogen cycle now the next one that means the fifth one now the fifth one is communicable diseases now what is the meaning of communicable diseases children communicable diseases now we have read this that the diseases which are spread by microbes and how it gets spread and how the microbes get spread or how it moves from one uh, part of one uh, human or one um, infected person to the another one maybe through air maybe through water food contact so what are the communicable diseases those diseases which get spread from the infected person to the healthy person through food water all these kind of mediums so how to write all uh, this this definition those diseases those diseases which spreads through healthy person uh, sorry through infected person through infected person to healthy person to a healthy person through water air food or contact so this is the meaning of the communicable diseases now the next one is pasteurization the next one is pasteurization now this not we don't have much place over here to write but still now what is pasteurization especially we talk about whenever we talk about pasteurization we are talking about milk that means to heat the uh, food item to or i'm talking specially about the milk if i talk about specially about the milk then how can i define pasteurization the process of heating milk to a very high temperature maybe 80 degrees celsius and then cooling it suddenly then bringing it suddenly to a very low temperature is known as pasteurization and this is the very good um, uh, process to keep the milk away from microorganism so what is the uh, word now here it is pasteurization and how can we define pasteurization the process of the process of heating milk to a very high temperature to a very there is no place now to a very high temperature maybe 60 to 90 degrees celsius and to cool it suddenly and oh ho and to there is no place now to write and to cool it suddenly i am not able to write over here actually suddenly is pasteurization and this is one of the very good method to keep milk safe from the attack of the microorganisms so this is the next definition which we were discussing pasteurization now the next one is 
uh, aerobic and anaerobic microorganisms. We have discussed this. Uh, what is the meaning of aerobic? Those microorganisms which which need uh, air, which need oxygen to grow, to uh, uh, to develop, to flourish. Are my, which kind of microorganisms? Aerobic microorganisms. That means uh, those microorganisms which need air for their growth, uh, to survive, to live are known as aerobic microorganisms and which one are anaerobic microorganisms which cannot survive in or which cannot flourish or which cannot grow in presence of air are known as anaerobic uh, not respiration anaerobic microorganisms. Now this as such there is no place to write over here. So I think now this is very clear to you that aerobic means those organism which requires air for their proper growth and anaerobic means which do not require air for the um, to survive or to live. This was all about the definitions and now we will move to the second question what all definitions we have done over here ammonification the formation of ammonia from the proteins nitrification the formation of nitrates from the ammonia denitrification the conversion of nitrates into the nitrogen now nitrogen cycle the con the circulation of nitrogen uh, between the living and the non living organism uh, non living things actually communicable diseases those diseases which spread uh, through what maybe the air water food or contact and pasteurization just now we have discussed. So, this is the question number first which is about the definition we are supposed to write certain definitions which we have written over here uh, which I have written over here and now we need to move to the next question and the next question is answer in one word. So, please note this and we will be discussing the next question.